Hello again. This is the course of computer programming, <clears throat> and we are entering the section three about input and conditional. <clears throat> so the section that we are going to learn in this chapter is about the input, how to define the user input and conditional if then else and one conditional alternatives you are going to learn about switch and for now we are going to learn about the input is one of the uh, important thing in the computer programming now if you still remember uh, the section two we learn about the area of a circle okay so at the time we are doing the compute area zero one. Okay. I just want to recall about this example. When you are doing this example, we have the number about the radius. Okay, let's see. In the circle area zero one, we have. Oh, okay. Please don't forget to open your Eclipse. Okay. Yeah, uh, if you have the value radius equals to five multiplied by five, then yeah, you will just put the mathematical operation like five multiplied by five multiplied by three point one blah blah blah. If you have the variable, then you will put the value in the variable. Let's say I have the variable radius, so I put the five into the variable radius and we just use the radius to do the mathematical operations and yeah the step the example number three we use the constant okay the constant is the value that you will not change once you do the program execution then in this case uh, we are just using all the value that we already know we we'll just assign the value and yeah user can do something in the code okay. but how if the users doesn't know anything about the code and they want to modify the value here okay. so we are going to learn one thing which is the user input and the user input is like this one okay let's see we are doing the uh, compute area 04 okay let's see compute area 04 and let's make a new package package so if you go to this uh, src okay yeah i have my first project i go to the src and then try to make a new package so you can separate the chapter based on this package i make it section 03 yeah and let's make the file name as i mentioned in this example it is about the compute area 04 okay so we will make this as compute area 04 okay and this java file will be in the section 03 the package 03 and don't forget to make the main method oops okay because i'm going to copy and paste from the ppt so i don't need that one actually but anyway i will copy and paste this one so you can just copy and paste this file oops okay i need to look something yeah i just copy and paste this one oops what happened oh so yeah this is a good example whenever you create the class name maybe you create the class name a little bit different <coughs> with mine so you are thinking that oh okay i make a mistake then what you can do with this one are you going to delete and make a new one or you can rename then yeah in this case i have the computer but this one is compute, yeah, so it's just a little bit different. Yeah, you, you can change here or you can change here. <clears throat> In this case, if you want to change here, then you just put the R and it solves the problem. 
or if you don't want to change here you can change the file name the dot java file and you can go to the refactor rename and yeah delete the r okay. so this by using this one you know that the file name compute area 04 the java now has been changed and there is no error okay now let's see mm, you already know the constant okay the constant is the variable which has a value that will you will not change during the program execution now we have what we call a scanner okay so the scanner is the input function and we are using the scanner console so console is the variable name you can define the variable name as you want okay. so the variable name as you learn about the identifier this identifier as long as it does not uh, conflict with the java word then you can use it so i'm using the console for this in, for this variable and yeah you will make this variable as a new okay what is new new means it is i i want to make one object okay so i will discuss the detail about the object later but for now let's uh, try to understand that you are going to use this syntax okay this index means i want to input i want to get the input from user if you are going to show the result then you are going to show the output then you can use the system dot out but if you are using the in it means i want to get the user's input and then i want to insert it into the computer so using the scanner i'm going to use the system dot in and once you have the system dot in you your system will understand that every object starting with the console will be the command or will be the syntax or will be the statement to get the input from users let's say now i'm using this input radius i want the users to input the value so the program will not do anything if uh, the program will not do anything if the users didn't give any input okay so let's see uh, let me run this okay you know the run is called control f11 okay so i will just use the control 11 and you can see now the input radius in meter so it is printed input radius in meter and let's say i want to put the value 8 okay so the users can do any input it can be 8 it can be 6 it can be 3 it can be 4 it can be 9 yeah it's up to you that's what we call as the input and when if we put the 8 here then yeah, the area will be counted automatically so the input that we inserted into the computer it will be considered as the integer so we will learn what is next in and is there any other way to express this method and yeah because i'm going to insert the integer value Okay, you can see here if you put your mouse in this method we call it this is the method so you can see that it give you one explanation scans the next token of the input as an integer okay int is integer so we have the variable as integer and after we have the radius the radius will be used to calculate the area radius multiplied by radius multiplied by the pi and the output will be the area so i'm going to use the area variable to show the result now okay i think uh, oops. okay if you have the input is five then it will show the area so as i mentioned to you okay when you execute this program it will wait you after some second after you insert the value then it will give you the next thing which is the result yeah 
the scanner is an object that can read input from many sources. So using the system.it, you can input from the users by typing, or you can also use the files, websites, database. Yeah. And when you use the scanner, it is important that you need to use the java.util. So this is a package. Yeah. So if you remember when I share you about the package, uh, maybe, maybe, you know, sorry, it's not package, okay, the, this is the package that you're using, okay, so this package is about the directory, so where you put the files, it will determine the name, so the name will be the directory name for your file, but if you are using the scanner, you need to use this one, import java.util.star, actually, I want to use a very specific file, which is scanner, okay, if you check this one, if you press the dot, okay, what happened? Then you can see there is there are many things up like abstract collection, abstract list, abstract map, abstract queue, abstract sequential list, and so on. So in the Java dot util, it means the utility of the Java. It includes many classes that you can use for your yeah program. If you want to specify a scanner then you can just call the scanner like this one yeah. but i don't want to use on the scanner or maybe you think that yeah it's very lengthy to type all these things so just put the star so what does it mean by star yeah star means everything so i want to use everything in the java.util for this program okay now If I already have this java.util, then you can use the scanner. So what if I don't have this one? What if I do not do this import? Okay. So if you check this one, I can put this one as comment. Okay. When you like take a look on this, then you can see that there's an error. What is this error? Yeah, the error message is scanner cannot be resolved to a type so there is no class name scanner we will deal with this object oriented more later but please understand that this is the object okay also is one of the object from the class scanner what is class yeah this is the class okay so a class name is the java file name and the java file name or the class name can create an object so this is the object console. So if I want to use the class scanner, I need to use the import. If you don't use this import, it means it is a new class and you need to make it by yourself. So when you have the scanner, then it means yeah, you need to use this. Oh, sorry, what happened? Yeah, you need to use this import function and when you try to use the scanner it means you are making one object so the object can be anything so you can put name you can put uh, input you can put any name as long as it doesn't conflict with the java word and then like what you already see before it is about the system.in so it means you want to get the input from the users there are several methods okay uh, I don't want to discuss a lot of methods, but these are the four important methods. The next int, which is to read the integer value. Next double, it is to read the double value. Next and next line. So yeah, we're going to learn about the next and next line. Next is only to read one word string from the user. And next time is to read one line string from the user. And remember that it's method which until the user press enter. So if you don't press enter, then the system will not read it. The value type by the year is written. So once you already press the enter, it means the value that you inserted, it will go to the variable that you define. If you are, yeah, whenever you have the input, I recommend you to put the prompt. So what is prompt? Prompt is something that you will print something that you will show before 
doing the input. So in this case, how old are you will be printed before you insert a value. And after you insert a value, the value will be entered into the variable age. And the age will be based on the input. And if you output or if you want to print the result of age, then you can do with the print line. Okay. So the print, print line actually is the same okay, for this one, print. So what is print? I guess I give this one, yeah, print. What is print? Yeah, if you know that print line is after you print something, then you will go to the next line. But if you are doing with print, you just print in the same line. Okay. So after you print the text, you want to get the input. Okay. So that's the meaning. So you will not go to the next line. So the prompt is necessary. It is a message telling the user what input to type. Now, I have another example. Okay. Let's see, this is another example about the... Oh. Okay, I will copy and paste this one. I will make a new uh, class. It's called its input example. Okay, so I will make this one. Make a new class, its input example. Okay, and okay, I just do the finish. And if you have this one, you can copy and paste. Now, the first is to use the class scanner. As I mentioned to you, the class scanner requires the import of the Java utility function. So once you already have this one and you have the scanner console, so this is the, con the object, and I want to print. Okay, this is the prompt. We call it prompt. So you need to give the word that what you want to do. So I want to get the age. How old are you? Okay. So something that is a message to the user to input something. If how old are you, then the users need to input a number. If you say like, what is your name? Then the users need to input a name. This is a string. So the data type will be different according to the input. So in this case, yeah. Yeah, if you are making the it's equals to 29, for example, okay. So let me run. So how old are you? I'm 29, yeah. Then you're having 36 years until retirement. How come they know that 36 years before the retirement? Okay, you can see after you input the, the number 29, into the variable age, so the variable age will be uh, measured with this equation, 65 minus 29, which is 36, okay? So the result of this variable operation will be in the variable years, and we are going to print line. Okay, this is the result. So the years is the variable after you do the mathematical operation. So you have 30, 36 years until retirement. Now, yeah, it, the word will be shown or the prompt will be shown and after that it will wait. And after you input the value, then the value will be saved into the variable age. And next, the mathematical, math, mathematical operation will be done. And finally, it will show the output. Now, if I have several scanner, is it possible? Yes, of course. Yeah. But it's very unique. Let's see. Scanner multiply. Okay, I will copy and paste this one. And then I will make the class again. So the name is scanner multiply. And then I will make the main method and yeah. Okay. The basic thing is using the scanner 
Yeah, you need to make a new object and then you don't forget to import the java.util. Now, insert two numbers. We have number one, which is integer, and number two, also integer. Now, we have two inputs, but how can we insert the two numbers? Okay. So I already give you the guideline here. So if you want to input two numbers, it means you can input the two numbers in different uh, location. Let's say I have this two number eight and eleven. So you know that this is a number. Then just separate the number with space. Space is a character. Space is a string. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yes. You can also do with the string on for space, but uh, basically it is a character. So a character is not a number. Then if you put an, a space here, it will show you two different numbers. So the first number will be entered into the variable num1 and 11 will be entered into the variable num2. And what is product? Product is integer, okay? And the product is a result of number one multiplied by number two, which is eight multiplied by 11. Then the result will be 88, okay? Now, if I know that usually the input, which as I mentioned before, the input should be, uh, you need to press the enter. Let's say five, and then I press enter. Is it possible? Oh yes, it's possible. So using the enter, it means I know that this is the first number. So the first number five or num one equals to five. And then let's I put in, uh, number again which is six then the result will be yeah 30 okay so you can use space or you can use just enter to split the input yeah as i mentioned to you this one the scanner can read multiple values from one line so if it is a number then you can have multiple values of course, it will be different if you are doing with the other methods, okay? Now we are just using the next integer and the next double. And another thing that you need to understand is about the tokens. So if you are dealing with the string, you need to understand the token, what is token? The token is a unit of user input as read by the scanner. The tokens are separated by white space. Or yeah, the white space can be space or types or new lines. So okay, please remember that the new lines mean it's also a white space. Okay. Now let's see how many tokens appear on the following line of input. Okay. If you see this one, we have the space. Okay. Over here is the space so it is one and then john we have another space which is two okay now we have smith we have another space so the space is can be only one space or a taps okay so we have another which is here four and then we have here five and then we have here six we have here seven we have here eight, okay? So we have eight space. So we have nine tokens, okay? So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So when a token is not the type of you ask for, it crashes, yeah? So the token should be precisely the same with the data type. If you're asking the data as integer, then you need to insert integer. Okay. And this one uh, example that we already had before, it is a token. Yeah. If you are doing with the integer, then it's just one token. If you are doing with the uh, double, you also have one token. Okay. So it's different.
let's see if I have the input like this one, what is your edge and then you're uh, making the integer. Input its example, okay. Now I have this one as integer. How if you input 32.5? Okay, error. What is the error message? It is the input mismatch exception. So you know that the variable is using integer. Why you put double? Okay, so that's error. Or if you run again, you know that this input is a number, but you input string. Of course, this is also error. Okay. So if you're asking me, then how do users know that it is an integer or string? Now, of course, you need to specify. Later, we will learn more about how to handle this kind of errors. The next example is about the string. Okay. How can we handle if we are doing the insertion with the string? Let's see, this is input string. So I will make a new class. Let's make the input string. So I'll just copy and paste. Now, okay, I have scanner if you already know scanner is to get the input uh, yeah this is the class to call uh, yeah as a class to create an object console and yeah, you can see here I'm making a prom to the temperature is something and I want to make it as a double okay so next double means I want to get the value as a double now, if I want to change this one, like for example, integer num, yeah, the variable num is integer, but the console is next double. Okay, it's an error. Okay, you cannot do this one. Also, the same with the uh, the reverse way. If the variable name is double and you want to input with the next in, so oh, that's fine. Oh, how come? Do you still remember? The precedence rule yeah so the double is higher and the integer is the lower one and if you input any integer let's say you input five then it can be a double value which is 5.0 okay so that's why it works with the double with the next integer but the other way around is not working okay so let's just use the double num and i want to make uh, in input from the double values and what is your opinion so i'm making the text one equals to the next is is a string and text two is also another string that is different the first i'm using the next and the other is i'm using next line so what is the difference okay so if the temperature is 27 okay what is your mean cool it is spring now okay okay cool it is spring now wow what is it <laughs> so next it is the comment or this is the method to get only one word next line because I'm still having the remaining values, then the remaining values is considered as one line. And this one line will be printed in the next line. So I'm using print line for this temperature and the print line for text one and print line for text two, okay? Now, you know the difference between next and next line, but what about if you change it okay is there any different so if i change this one into next line and if it is next what happened yeah if you run today temperature is 27 for example what is your opinion cool it is spring now 
Oh, only cool. What happened? Hmm? Yep. So we have the next line, and the next line actually, this is the all things. Okay, and then the console it goes to the next. It just show the cool. So if I use put as next line. Yeah. Spring now. No. What you see is the text number one is not consider, and the text number two will consider the line. Okay. If you are doing with the first next line, it means you want to get the values. The first value is actually no. Okay. After we, we, you have the what is your opinion is something nothing. Okay. If you are making with the double next line, the, the second next line will get the values. So the values will be cool. It's just spring now, and all of them will be in the text too. Okay. So the, for the text one, if you are using the next line. It will not be counted into the variable. So I can say that this is the uh, data type for string. Okay? And uh, two methods, which is next and next line, is uh, something like this one. Next returns any input until a white space. So once you cannot find the white space, then it will be considered as one word. But the next line, it returns the rest of the current line, including any line separator at the end. So if you have the, for example, text rest n, yeah, then it will uh, return the rest of the current line, not the separator. So the position is set to the beginning of the next line. So the beginning of the next line, what is it? Then it is, it will be set. And this method continues to search through the input looking for a separator, then it may buffer all of the input searching for the line to skip if there is no line separators are present. It means if you have the backslash n, then it will go to the next. It will uh, find another text. Okay? But if you have no backslash n, then it will save all the input in one line. Okay? There is, if there is no separator, then it will show everything in one line. That's why we have the separator first. The separator, here, when I input here, there's an enter, and the enter is considered as the separator itself. Enter means go to the next line. Okay? So that's why it does not recognize when you have the uh, next line and next. Okay? okay, I guess that's all. For the input, I will continue the video with the next chapter about the conditional. Okay, see you in the next video.